Hey, fourth graders. So today we are starting our new unit and we are talking about division. Before we dive into division, I want to go over a little bit of our vocabulary that you're going to be seeing in all of the videos that we have about division. It's really important that you understand these words and what they mean, okay? This video specifically, the content that we cover after the vocabulary, is specifically going to go with lessons one, two, and three that are all about mental math and estimation with division, just so you kind of have a reference. So again, this video is gonna go with lessons one, two, and three, and we're gonna go over division vocabulary, mental math with division, and estimation with division. All right, so let's get started. If I have a division problem, I'm gonna go ahead and write out the whole problem. 12 divided by three equals four, all right? There are three parts to this problem, and it's really important that you understand what those parts are called and what those parts mean. And we're actually, in our next video, going to talk a lot about what the numbers in a division problem mean, okay? So I'm not going to spend too much time on that today because in your next video, that's what you're going to be seeing. Okay, so my first number is called the dividend, and the dividend is the amount I start with, all right? write that out for you just so you can see it for my visual learners. The dividend is the amount we start with. If you remember with division, what you're doing is you're taking a large group of items and you're splitting them evenly between smaller groups, okay? So, or between multiple groups rather. So you're taking a large amount and you're splitting it evenly. That's a key with division. We have to make equal sized groups, all right? So this number right here is my divisor. My divisor is a really important number with division, and I'm gonna go over why in just a few minutes, but the divisor stands for the amount of groups that we're making, okay? And then this last number right here is the answer to the division problem. It's also called the quotient, and the quotient stands for the amount in each group. All right. So that's our three main parts of a division problem, and every division problem has a dividend, or the amount we start with, a divisor, the amount of groups, and a quotient, which is the amount in each group. But there is one other vocabulary word that's really important with division, and it's something that we don't see in every problem, but we do see sometimes. So let's look at an example. If I have 14 divided by three, all right, I'm not going to write the answer out, but yeah, I'm going to actually show you how we might solve 14 divided by 3. Okay, so again, this is my candy. Let's say I'm planning a birthday party and I buy a bag of candy and it comes with 14 pieces in it. And I know I have three friends coming to my birthday party and I want all three friends to get the same amount of candy. Okay, so I'm going to have my three friends here. We have friend number one, friend number two friend number three. I tend to draw easy things like circles and X's because I'm a really horrible drawer, but if you like to draw, you know, you could draw like a little stick figure for each of your friends and pass out the candy among them. However you want to do it, that's kind of up to you. Obviously, more detailed drawings take longer, so there is that. Circles and X's are pretty fast to draw, but it's up to you. However, it helps the math to make sense in your head is what I want you to do. Okay, now I'm going to take my 14 pet pieces of candy and I'm going to pass them out just like you would pass out cards if you were playing a card game. One for you, 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 until I run out, right? Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, I've passed out all of my candy. Now I want you to take a look at my three groups and I wanna know what do you notice? If you were in my classroom, that's exactly what I would ask. What do you notice? Okay, hopefully if we were in a classroom setting right now, you want somebody would be raising their hands. Hopefully all of you would be raising your hands, Mrs. Long, Mrs. Long. I notice that two groups have five and one group has, one group has four. And you'd be correct, right? I have two groups of five and one group of four. But if you remember, when I very first started this video, I said we're making equal sized groups. And in fact, the groups have to be equal sized. Okay? They have to have the same amount in them. Well, I can't just add one over here. I only have 14 pieces of candy. It's not like there's a magic piece of candy that just magically appears, right? 
That's not how it works. So what I have to do is I have to take away a piece of candy from these two. So now they all have four, and four is my quotient again. But I had two leftover pieces of candy. I can't forget about them. They didn't, they didn't disappear either, right? Unless maybe your little brother or sister ate them. But <laughs> they don't just disappear either. They're still part of the problem. Okay, we had 14 pieces of candy and we have to end with 14 pieces of candy split evenly between the two groups. All right, so I have two left over and my leftover is what's called my remainder. And this is how we represent it in division. And again, we're gonna go into remainders a lot in the next video. We don't really have to deal with remainders with mental math and estimation, but I do just, because we're going over vocabulary, I do wanna show that to you. Our remainder, is the leftovers. That's the amount left over. So again, I had 14 pieces of candy. I split the candy evenly between my three friends. Each friend got four pieces, and then I have two pieces left over that I maybe I can eat myself, right? Okay, so those are my vocabulary words. We have our dividend, our divisor, our quotient, and our remainder. Now let's look at how we can use mental math to solve division problems. If you remember from our last couple of units of multiplication, our mental math was all revolving around working with multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. So numbers that have zeros on the end of them. Okay, so if I have, let's say, 35 divided by 5, okay, I want to think 35, or sorry, 5 times what number equals 35? Well, here's where I said my, remember, my divisor is going to be really important. Well, I can skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So that was 7. All right? So 7 times 5 equals 35. If I have 350 divided by 5, oh, you may be starting to notice a pattern that we had with our multiplying by, 100, by multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000, right? We have 35 divided by five equals seven, and then I have one zero on the end. All right, 3,500, hopefully right now you're like, oh, Mrs. Long, I see the pattern, right? 35 divided by five equals seven, and now I have two zeros on the end, and then let's say I have 35,000 divided by five, well, five times seven still equals 35, and now I have three zeros on the end, all right? So it's the same idea, all right? There's one way where it can be a little bit tricky though, and I do wanna show you an example of this. Let's say I have um, 200 divided by four. Okay, well, when we were multiplying, we were just doing the front end, right? We were looking right at the front number. So you might be thinking, well, how many times can four go into two? And a lot of times, just like when we're when we're subtracting, we just reverse it and make it easier. Well, four times or, or two goes into four two times, right? But that's not what I said. How many times does four go into two? So if I have two pieces of candy, can I split them evenly between my four friends? No, I can't. Okay. But what if I had 20 pieces of candy? Okay. So sometimes we have to use one of our zeros. What if I have 20 pieces of candy? Can I split 20 pieces of candy evenly between my four friends? Well, let me think about my four times tables. I have four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Oop, I can, right? How many times did I do it? One, two, three, four, five. So each friend could get five pieces of candy. And then you see I have one zero left over that I'm adding on to the end. Okay? So that is what we're basically thinking about. What, look at my front number or numbers, okay? How many times does this go into this? And you notice what I did right here. I listed the multiplication facts. Let me show you another example of doing that. Let's say I have um, 560 divided by seven. Whew, sevens are hard, right? It's hard to remember your sevens times tables. I get it. I had a hard time learning my sevens and eights as well. And I, that's what I've seen the most students struggle with. This is 
sevens and the eights. So the sixes is not too bad. Fives and below, usually they, we can get those. There's trick for the nines, but sevens and eights are beast. So we have to have a strategy, okay? Remember I said my divisor is gonna be really important. I'm gonna be skip counting by my divisor to figure out my division. So what am I gonna do? I am gonna list my sevens times tables over to the side here. Now I know I'm trying to look for 56. So I really only have to go until I get 56. And I know I'm gonna find 56 because right now I'm working with mental math and that always works out that way, <laughs> okay? So that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna list my sevens. I'm gonna start with seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Oh, I got to 56, so I can actually stop. All right. Now, obviously, if you already know how to skip count by sevens, if you can go 7, 14, 21, 28, or you already know seven times what equals 56, you've saved yourself a step. But if you don't, you have to have a strategy to find it. You can't just sit there and stare at the problem or make a guess and hope that you're right. Okay, here's our strategy. This is a really easy and quick strategy to use, okay? So now all I have to do is see, well, how many times did I write numbers down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven times eight equals 56, okay? And then how many zeros do I have left over? One zero. So 560 divided by seven equals 80. All right, so those are our mental math strategies when it comes to division. Now let's talk about estimation. And with estimation, typically what you're doing is rounding, right? That was what we did before. We rounded to make the numbers easier to work with. Well, we're gonna be kind of doing that with division, but we're not gonna be using quite as traditional of rounding. And let me show you why. Let's say I have 247 divided by six. 247 divided by six. Remember, I'm working with my six times table, so I want to think six times what is going to get me close here, all right? Now, if I were to round this number, I would round, and it would be 250, right, or 200. Well, I know six times, there's not six times something that equals 20, and there's not six times something that equals 25, right? But if I have my six times tables, I have six, 12, 18, 24. Ooh, check this out. There's a 24 right there, right? So I'm going to round this to 240. 240 is very close to 247. So you are going to get a close estimate. And that's the idea with an estimate. The answer is close to the exact answer. And our answer is actually going to be very close to the exact answer with this estimate, okay? Well, and now we're looking at just like what we did before. Two or sorry, six times what equals 24? One, two, three, four. How many zeros do I need to add? I need to add one zero. Okay, so we're thinking about compatible numbers more than actual rounding when it comes to division. And the reason is because when we're finding an estimate, we don't want to have an estimate with a remainder. That doesn't really make any sense, okay? That's doing a lot of extra work that we don't really need to do when it comes to estimating. Estimating is intended to be a, a strategy that you can pretty easily do in your head or really quickly do out on paper. And if you're having to do division to fi in finding a remainder, that's not a quick and easy strategy to use, okay? Estimation is meant to find about how many. And this is still finding about how many. We're just not using actual rounding in, oh, well, you know, the four tells the two to stay a two or the seven tells the four to go to a five. We're not doing that, okay? We're not finding exactly which 10 or which 100 it's closest to. We're thinking about the number itself. Okay, what is it closest to that six will go into? Okay, let's look at one more example with that. Let's say I have um, 300. 56 divided by um, 5, all right? Well, my 5s, most of you guys can probably do those in your head. So I would say 350, right? 350 is probably going to be what we're looking for. Well, can 5 go into 350? Let's see. 5, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, right? So 350, remember we're looking at that 35. It went in seven times. And then I have one zero left over. So the answer would be about 70 in this case. All right. So again, with estimating, you're looking for compatible numbers. Then 356 and 350 are really, really close to each other. Okay. And that's kind of what you're wanting to look at. You're wanting to look at like the first two digits when it comes to estimating and thinking, okay, well, what can my divisor go into? Can it go into that? What is really close to that that it can go into? And that's how we do estimating with division. All right. So there we have it. We went over our vocabulary for division. We went over our mental math strategies for division. And we went over estimation with division. Um, these, this video should help you with lessons one, two, and three of your division unit. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please reach out to your math teacher. And have a great day, guys. I'll see you in the next video.